Hello everybody, this is Petey from Berger Arcade at BergerArcade.com and here we are again with another little tutorial on NGUI and this time we're going to be making a basically a floating sprite. So if you have some sort of NPC in your game and you want maybe a quest icon above their head, uh, this is what this is going to be used for. And of course, it, you know, it's going to be used for pretty much any game object in game that you want to be able to have an icon above. Uh, but before we jump into that, I did find a bug from our last example, the floating text. And that's uh, sometimes when I start it up, and I go ahead and try to start it up. I get this error here. Now I've gone ahead and added a few debug statements out just to see what the flow is. And I'm calling init before start, uh, sometimes all the time. And in this case, I am for all of them. And what's happening here is that it's actually trying to get a reference to the, or trying to use the GUI camera. Uh, but the reference is not set until uh, the start function. And the easy fix for this would be to actually just go into our script. Let's just open it up. I would be to go into our script and take the GUI camera line here. And to go ahead and actually just paste that into the awake. And that'll fix it. I generally don't like doing that when I'm using someone else's plugin though. I like to leave them the awake function. So instead of doing that, what I'm actually going to do is just come down here and create, uh, let's, see, let's place that back in, an if block. And what I want to say is just if, GUI camera is equal to null. So basically if it has not been assigned yet, then go get it. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and put it down to where we're getting the error. Uh, I think it was on the follow. Yeah, it was in follow me. Right here, so I'm just gonna go right above it. Now, if there was something else I was gonna do with the camera as well, I'd probably break it out into its own function and just throw these two lines in it and just have the function call. Uh, but I don't think there's anything else I'm ever gonna wanna do except just you know find the camera. So let's go ahead, we'll save that off. Uh, make sure there's no typos. I'll go ahead and start it back up. And there we go, it's still working. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually remove these uh, debug statements, I'll do it a little bit later. Let's just go ahead and actually just start our project. So I'm going to come in and actually just copy uh, the floating text scene. And we'll just use the keyboard shortcut. Instead of floating text, I'm going to call it the floating sprite. Uh, maybe. All right, we'll go ahead into that scene. I'll go ahead and save the old one. And uh, well, there's going to be a few things I want to change here. I'm going to have to make a prefab for my floating sprite. So I'm gonna come down here to my widget tool. Uh, I've got my atlas, atlas already assigned and the font already assigned. I'm gonna go ahead and make a sprite. Now there's a couple of ways we can do it here with different sprites. Uh, I'm gonna be using a sprite, a slice sprite. You can basically stretch it and it'll keep its aspect ratio or keep it, um, it doesn't keep its aspect ratio. So you can stretch it lengthwise. Uh, basically think of a tic-tac-toe board, uh, the nine slices. It's like that and it stretches each one independently. We'll cover slice sprites a little bit later on. But for now I'm just gonna keep a sprite, which is just, uh, well, sprite, it's gonna be above the character. And uh, you can pick whatever one you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the boots. And I'm gonna go add it to my scene. And here it is right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename it to uh, floating sprite. And right off the bat, it's kind of big. I'm gonna go ahead and make it half the size. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and make it half the size. So that's gonna be what, 48 uh, by 64. Uh, there's fine. You can go ahead and size it as you want. I'm gonna change the pivot point to be the bottom center. Uh, simply because it's gonna be attached to uh, whatever you know, we have the floating text attached to. So let me see, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm not sure if we've covered depth yet. And the, basically the way this works is the higher the number, uh, the closer it is to the camera. So if I have something that has a depth of one, this boot is gonna appear on, on top of it. And if there's something with a depth of zero, then you know the, whatever's at the depth of one is gonna appear in front of that and also the two in front of that. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm actually gonna move it back one. And as you can see, it's already 
interfering with the, the driver, which is fine, because I'm probably actually going to shrink that down just a little bit more. Uh, did I hit make pixel perfect? Uh, it should be 48 by 64. There we go. So actually, that's fine. So I've got that done. I'm going to go ahead and make a prefab of it. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to keep the floating sprite. We'll go ahead. We'll delete it. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the driver here. And I'm going to want to change a few of the names. So we got floating text driver. Uh, so if we go ahead and actually select that script, I'm just going to duplicate it. And then, of course, we're going to have to rename it. So we're going to call it floating sprite driver. And we'll open that up. And we're going to have to change the name. And we'll save that off. Uh, just make sure it's right here now. Uh, let's go ahead and remove it. And we'll add this. Then we'll go ahead and we'll set the prefabs up. So target was this. Uh, the prefab is the floating sprite, which is actually looking for floating text. Uh, so we're going to have to go ahead and switch this here. So floating text, we'll go ahead, we'll double, duplicate that and call it floating sprite. Now, the reason why I'm just duplicating is because I want to show how we're going to refactor it later. And pretty much these classes have the exact same components. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that we can take out. So we'll go ahead, we'll open this up. We'll have to rename it. And All right, so we've got that done. Uh, we're gonna come in, take the floating sprite and actually add the component to it. Oops, let's take the actual class here. And just like floating text, we don't wanna sign anything off the bat. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll click on the driver again. It's gonna want the prefab, which uh, I still have to change. So we're gonna go back in. And I can already see, you know, this is going to be changed to a game object, but for now, we'll just keep it as a, let me see, where is it? A floating sprite. And we'll head back in, that'll change it. And we'll just go ahead, we'll drag this on. Uh, the font, uh, we're not going to need the font now because it's actually a sprite. And the parent, we do need the parent. And of course we could just grab the parent of this, but uh, it doesn't really matter how you get it in the driver. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll save this off. And I'm gonna go get rid of the font. That'll probably create some errors. I'm not sure if we actually are using the font anymore. It doesn't look like it. Now I'm just going to keep it called FT, but we do have to switch it from being a floating text to a floating sprite. And we'll have to fix this as well. And anything that has to do with the actual uh, text itself, we're going to have to get rid of, uh, such as color. Well, color we can keep. Um, the string here we're going to have to change. So let's go actually go through and take a look at all the methods uh, that we've had before. And well, we'll close this one for now. And just start chopping up the stuff that we don't need. So here we are. We're in our floating sprite script. And let's just take it from the top. So we're not going to be grabbing a UI label. Now we're going to want to go ahead and grab a reference to uh, let's see, floating sprite. This is right here, UI sprite. So just keep things simple. I'm going to keep the same variable name. Well, actually, no, we'll just refactor it. Uh, so we want a UI sprite. And instead of calling it LBL, I'm going to rename it to underscore sprite. And we'll go ahead and save that off. 
So the next up is follow target. I'm not sure why we have it as public. Uh, we should put a setter and getter for that. If not, we'll do it when we refactor. But for now, we'll just leave that. Uh, we still need the vector three pos to know what position it's supposed to be in. Uh, we still need to know the camera target, uh, the target to follow, which again should be private. Uh, well, we'll get it again when we're refactoring. Now, I just want to make sure the variables that we have are ones that we actually need. So all those are right. We still want to cache our transform. We're going to come down to the awake function. I'm just going to leave the debugs in for now. Uh, yep, we want to cache our transform. Uh, the get component, we don't want a UI label anymore. We want a UI sprite. And when we're going to refactor it, we'll have to take a look. I believe they both inherit from UI widget. I'll have to check just to make sure. Uh, but when we refactor, we'll look that up. So I'm going to check here to see if uh, we have a sprite. Uh, just quickly change this. Uh, yeah, we'll come down to our start function. Nothing to change here. Uh, text color. Uh, I think we actually just changed that to color. Uh, we're going to leave the exact same function in, though. We can change that when we refactor. Text we don't need, so let's get rid of that. Follow targets. Uh, yep. So we did actually have a public setter and getter. And we have a public up here. Okay, well, we should be moving it to private. But like I said, we're going to be refactoring it soon anyway, so let's just leave it. Uh, so we have follow target, uh, the target, nothing to change there. Uh, font, well, we're not dealing with fonts anymore. Size will be the same. Uh, tween position, I don't think I'm going to need to tween the position. But I'm going to leave it there just, just for now because when we refactor, we might want to have tweening automatically built in. And we might even want to add more tweening as we go along. So we'll just leave that. Uh, the knit's going to be completely, well, not completely different. Uh, well, we're not going to have a string for text. Uh, we're still allowed to change the color and send in the target. So we'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, spawn app will leave. Nothing there to change. Uh, follow me should be the exact same. And I'm going to leave the destroy function. And the late update should be the same. So we'll go ahead. We'll save that off. Um, really, the only thing we have to change here, I think, is just the init. I don't think we actually have anything dealing with text. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll save this. Let's go back into Unity, see if we have any errors. Uh, we do not. Let's go ahead. We'll start this up and see if it puts a sprite uh, above our character force. It does, and it's floating upwards. I do not want that. Uh, so let's turn off this whole tweening thing. I just want a sprite uh, above his head so that it looks like uh, a quest NPC. Uh, we don't really need the following. So we don't need any of this. But as you can see, you will be able to use use it if you want. And it helps if I actually start it before I try to hit the driver. And there we go. I can put a quest icon above someone's head. Now, of course, we could add some scaling and everything else to it. But uh, well, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. I just wanted to get an icon above something. There we go. And we'll probably want to do something so that we don't have multiples then again you might actually want multiples above someone's head so for now we're just going to leave it like that uh we got an icon above someone <laughs> anyway in the next video we're going to sit down and refactor these two scripts uh pull out a parent uh class that we can inherit from anyway thanks for watching i'll see you later Bye bye